Hi all, the 43rd Chess Olympiad is producing some amazing and interesting games. One of those is Fabiano Caruana against Vichy Anand, so a mega clash. Caruana of course is going to be challenging Magnus Carlsen for the world title, title soon. Uh, and Vichy of course is a, uh, a former world champion. So let's see this mega clash. The, just quickly though, the 43rd Olympiad is being played in Batumi, which is the second largest city of Georgia, located on the coast of the Black Sea in the country's southwest. There's more information uh, and variations, by the way, in the pinned comment of this video about that, and you want to you might want to check that out. So d4 from Fabiano Caruana, and Vichy plays knight f6. We have c4 e6, g3, d5, bishop g2. So Catalan territory. D takes c4. And uh, funny enough, I just wrote something on Cora just yesterday about the Carlson Caruana World Championship match, and I expected some innovations uh, in the Catalan actually. And I mentioned for Colson, but maybe I should edit that for Caruana because actually we're going to see something quite special in this game. Caruana with the white pieces here in this Catalan, very well trodden position so far. Uh, an alternative to Bishop. Uh, an alternative to d takes c4 is bishop e7. For example, this has been seen quite a lot and it's thought to be about even. So we have here d takes c4, queen a4 check. This is also very popular. Knight bd7, queen takes c4, a6. Now here is where it gets super interesting. There's been nearly 500 top level games in chess based live book from this position. And usually, players block in the bishop with knight f3 and that does allow black to play b5 but it's as if that is welcomed basically to play b5 there's a very interesting tactical sequence which uh, is dangerous for black potentially uh, so let me just show you this knight f3 b5 has been played a lot here so you might think this is silly why allow b5 queen c6 rook b8 bishop f4 as if c7 is an issue and games have continued. This is very sharp. Knight d5 protecting the bishop. Uh, sorry, hitting the bishop and protecting c7. Bishop g5. Bishop e7. Bishop takes. Queen takes. Knight c3. Now here, there is a sensible equalizing move at black's disposal, which maybe is why Fabiana didn't go into this line, uh, which is just bishop b7. It just seems okay for black. For example, knight takes, bishop takes, knight takes. This is looking peaceful and even, and it's kind of wasting the white pieces. So this whole line, the fun, the fun though in this line is to be had if black plays knight before, which seems quite lucrative. You know, knight c2 check and hitting the queen. Uh, but here, if we look at this, queen takes. There's something really fascinating about this line, losing the rook. Can you see what white plays here? It's really quite amazing. Okay, it's knight e5. Now, if black castles knight c6, forking queen and rook, and white is actually doing very well there after knight takes b8. And whatever way black plays it here, it's it's actually dodgy. Queen b4, knight c6 is the most disastrous because of queen d8 checkmate. Uh, so yeah, this knight e5 is, is powerful here. On queen d8, just taking and then knight c6 check, knight takes and then king d2 getting this knight so white would have a small edge there but as i say when i've looked into this the whole line which is super popular here uh it seems as though yeah black's got an equalizing route so but this is all bypassed this is a new move it's like a novelty in chess based live but as far as i can see bishop e3 and it's got two perks both these bishops are kind of involved in prophylaxis prevention here yeah, against c5 this one and against b5 this one kind of discouraging that so a very fascinating uh, novelty move bishop e3 from a very well-known position we have bishop d6 uh, trying to punish this with knight g4 i thought this is worthy of checking out i think the bishop just drops back bishop d2 i think this is probably the best thing to do and then play queen c1 uh to be able to play knight because otherwise it's getting in the way of the knight uh, going to c3 if the, if the queen wants to come backwards so the queen's actually quite good there on c1 it seems 
this position is quite good for white for example white's uh, having a pleasant position here small edge so um yeah it seems as though there isn't such a major problem with knight g4 so it's kind of accepted just bishop d6 vishy Anan plays as if it's no problem queen goes back now because then knight c3 is not blocking in the queen from going to c2 immediately otherwise you have to be like rooted via b3 or something if knight c3 later but here uh we don't see knight f3 here so this is keeping up the prophylaxis with knight h3 keeping the bishop eyeing this whole diagonal stopping b5 uh knight f3 yeah just b5 then and it doesn't seem as though black can be really uh punished here this seems okay for black so it's a very very interesting novelty and a very very interesting follow-up which makes the novelty even more delicious to check out here from my perspective so e5 white castles h6 i do like theoretical novelties d takes knight uh, d takes e5 knight takes knight c3 and it seems as though okay black's got that e5 in which is a standard recipe for activating the pieces but there's a nice knight f4 to d5 plan here potentially we have rook ad1 rook a8 knight f4 it looks as though white's got a beautiful position if we just look aesthetically at this position it looks really quite beautiful uh, so we have c6 stopping knight d5 ideas bishop d4 so centralizing the bishop that's fine as well so everything white's done the quirky looking moves bishop e3 and knight h3 they seem absolutely fine now it looks as though it's a very very high harmonious position and vishy maybe plays a very committal looking move it, by default you can maybe say this is double-edged because isn't there some risk pushing pawns which can't go backwards so isn't it by default almost deserving a double-edged description uh, a less committal move say bishop d7 it seems as though here white it white should have a small edge in these continuations for example this one white should have a small edge there's some central pawn mobility <clears throat> for example maybe with f4 and e5 at some point so anyway g5 very committal knight d3 knight takes d3 is played it seems here bishop f5 just just pinning the knight might be an idea for example taking on d3 and this should be an even position i don't see uh the, the big issue there uh investigating this so knight takes d3 though was played rook takes bishop e5 uh here on white is threatening something very concrete if i'll just to show you if rook b8 bang bishop takes f6 and then knight e4 so that bishop's kind of loose here so black would have to give up the exchange and just be completely lost so um we have bishop e5 queen d2 interesting supporting both d4 but also supporting potentially f4 and looking at this pawn chain here bishop f5 e4 bishop g6 and now it looks as though f4 is not possible is it here because surely f4 is also in its own right extremely double-edged isn't it just weakening this diagonal isn't it just isn't that pawn under great pressure here uh f4 is actually played though black has to be very careful here it seems black has to play to stay in the game here in fact bishop takes d4 and this this seems okay probably white does best to play actually e5 not trying to trap the bishop uh, so for example here rook d1 and then this position is even uh any attempt to try and embarrass this bishop with f5 in this position seems to backfire in some of the variations bishop h5 actually seems possible here very possible because for example h3 is a disaster because of queen c5 that that pun punishes that diagonal totally if not e2 then the bishop takes on e2 to win the rook uh so this is very tricky bishop h5 here uh which is starting to question f5 and actually even even bishop h7 is not the end of the world for black uh this this type of scenario for example black 
can try and arrange a blockade on e5 and then get the bishop out later to g8 with a small edge but yeah i mean it seems also yeah basically bishop h5 is plausible in this position which which means yeah this does seem to be the way that black should have gone in theory bishop takes and then rook d8 seems fine for whatever reason uh this continuation wasn't chosen uh and maybe maybe there's there's other options there but bishop takes d4 is it seems the recommendation here but black bishop took on f4 and maybe expecting an ordinary recapture now if an ordinary pawn recapture was played then bishop takes and then rook ad8 and that should be fine for black black seems to be having nice pressure against white center but what happened in the game is very very interesting now fabiano played bishop takes e5 and maybe this came as somewhat of a surprise because not only f4 in general is a bad idea sometimes because of the diagonal but here it's like making sure this is like with check as well so isn't e4 going to be dropping there is a silver lining to this a subtle silver lining now what we know from a lot of uh, games recently even in computer games is when you snap off a knight for a bishop you seem there seems to be a kind of tactical explosion sometimes on the other color complex so the light squares and in fact that seems to be the case here after g takes so light squares are lit up here now it seems after check king h1 there are issues for black big issues in this position it's not so simple and clear-cut as losing this pawn black did take on e4 just to show the light square issues if bishop takes then knight takes knight takes bishop takes rook takes and now there's check winning that rook yeah there's light square issues <laughs> uh, so um here actually uh, it's tricky for black if king h8 then f5 is really quite dangerous here because now there's queen takes h6 and this is a winning position for white and there's ideas of doubling and playing rook d6 soon after that if king h7 then e5 is good because this is with check if the king's on h7 that's very very silly oh, bishop takes d3 because now that's check and winning the knight that's great for white um and here instead if not taking that knight h5 then knight e4 and this is just great for white as well winning material like that so this is all pretty horrible stuff uh it seems so black vichy uh, actually played knight takes e4 but as i say there's a silver lining to white's play knight takes in this position if black plays bishop takes e4 then bishop takes e4 is winning because of this key check so hitting the rook hitting the king so that's a rook up thanks very much so in the game we have rook takes e4 and white has to be careful here not to play bishop takes e4 this would be dreadful because after bishop takes e4 check the queen and bishop are coordinating well forcing white to interpose a rook black can actually keep that pin for a moment threatening horrible things like rook g8 and then bishop takes and then mating on g1 so just just to put that on the board for example say that was silliness bishop takes and then queen g1 so white has to be treading very carefully here and say h3 rook g8 king h2 to unpin then black is just standing a lot better after this sequence check and then queen f5 black is just a pawn down with a nice blockade here it's actually an edge for black there so here rook takes was played but now Karana pins that bishop threatening f5 and this is really tricky for black uh, so if the rook moves f5 it's just it's just winning a piece so but she tries rook d4 here and now this is a really incisive move queen e3 creating a pin on that rook renewing f5 as a threat and the queen's protected by the rook as well on g3 so it's not just pinning that bishop but lending support to the queen here and actually this looks like a lost position it becomes 
it transpires this is actually very lost for black black actually resigned here uh, if rook c4 then just taking it and then f5 winning a piece so the same with rook d5 just take and then f5 if king h7 uh, here then f5 and then if bishop takes then rook takes is winning material so if queen takes then there's queen takes d4 if rook d1 check here doesn't help rook f1 and then that's just a piece up uh, and then in this line here by the way uh, rook takes if rook d1 check here oh sorry we said that sorry F, rook takes f5 oh so one thing to mention here though this check there's queen g1 that saves the day for white there with a piece up so it's it looks all pretty lost because of this f5 stuff here yeah it's quite a brief game 26 moves so very very interesting uh how fabiano navigated all the tactics there sensing bishop takes e5 was worthy of great investigation very very interesting it seems as though white was like rule breaking a bit with the f4 and, and especially taking off with his dark square bishops like emphasizing the weakness of the style but the upsides was this this rook was switching to that very key g3 square pinning and supporting uh, the queen coming to e3 later with f5 being a really dangerous threat very difficult to parry very very interesting tactics there so great credit to both players though uh, very interesting game indeed comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much